Hey everyone, it's Mace1370. So the Ardor season finally ended and they just passed out the rewards. We got the awesome uh, Snow White Warmth epic skin for Fallen Cecilia. So we're gonna check that out. Um, and I managed to finish in Legend this season, which is really exciting. So we got the Legend frame for, I guess they call it the Splendid Ardent frame one. And the background pack for the Ardor Battlefield. I was really hoping I'd be able to like take a video of the rankings at the end, but the uh, the rankings were super laggy for everybody, so I wasn't able to do that. I was able, you can see here, to take a screenshot of my final standing about 44 seconds out. I was at rank 50, so I don't think that, I don't think it changed probably in the last 40, 44 seconds for me. Um, looks like I have about 680 games played or so, um, with a 64.8% win rate, so I think I did pretty good. Um, I want to check out really quickly how this uh, frame and stuff looks. Let's see, I haven't even changed my frame in ages. Here we go, change frame. Uh, do I have to like collect it? Oh, is it down here maybe? No? Does it go to the mailbox? Maybe it goes to the mailbox? Yes, it goes to the mailbox. Strange. All right, so we got the frame, and we got the FCC skin, and we got the background pack. Okay, let's try this again. Okay, yeah, that would be a cool one to have. All right, that's a pretty sick looking frame. I don't know if Opsig is the best to put underneath it because she's kind of like silvery next to the gold. We can try, let's see, I want to put the FCC skin and see how she looks. I think out of all the Epic Pass skins, or not Epic Pass, but out of all of the RTA skins they've released so far, this FCC one looks pretty incredible, at least in the previews. Yeah, that's pretty badass. Quit. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, let's make her the rep here and see if it works well with the frame. I think that looks pretty good. Yeah, I like that. Uh, I think the white pairs really well with the frame. Um, so yeah, I was very excited to be able to end in Legend this season. Um, I thought, you know, because I did pretty well, I'm gonna go through a quick account review and just show you what units I used and, you know, how I built them. Um, so I hope you enjoy, let's get started. All right, so we're just gonna run through the heroes from top to bottom. First up is Haldeda Euphine. This is a hero I did not pick at the very end um, I didn't draft her at all on the last day. I did draft her a couple days prior to that, so she was used. Um, I think the reason why is because I was pre-banning Basar on the last day almost exclusively, and HU Fiend is really just a Basar counter. So I have her built here. Um, I had her on crit damage and crit chance, which is I think a better build with Snow Crystal. Right now she's on this like high attack burn build, which I think works well with Junkyard Dog, uh, but I think Snow Crystal is better for her overall. Uh, the idea is Basar goes, triggers Snow Crystal, which CR pushes her above the enemy DPS, so she's able to CR push your team up to take a turn in response. Um, overall, I think she's a okay hero. She works in that role. The problem is Last Rider Crow is absolutely everywhere. He's you know a really high priority pick target right now, and he completely hard counters her, so it's really hard to take her. Um, so I took off the gear she was on, and I kind of distributed it around to different heroes, and I, I just put this gear back on her. Um, she's really, this is a Junkyard Dog build, really. Um, but I think the Snow Crystal build is better. So next up we have Fire Ravi. I, I don't use Ken at all. Fire Ravi was a complete all-star. I drafted her a ton on the final day. Um, I think this build is very solid. Um, my main priority for her was getting her to have high HP, you know, and good defense. Uh, and the high HP is to counteract true damage units like ML Crow. If she gets one-shotted, bad news, right? So um, you want her to have enough HP to take that last rider crowd bike, you know, and counter back and heal. Um, and, you know, the tank stats as well to help that out with the defense. And then you can cheat on her attack. Like 2800 doesn't look like a lot of attack, but her passive boosts it up so much, it just gets completely crazy. You know, so only with 2800 attack and 260 crit damage, this Rabbi hits like a truck. With the counter set, I think the exclusive uh, that dispels is by and far best in slot. It works super well. You know, like FCC will hit her to provoke her when she has her skill three up. Ravi counters and cleanses the way that provoke. And 
you know, essentially negates a complete turn of FCC, you know, crowd control. Sigurd Scythe, I think, is best in slot for her with the build that I have. It uh, provides her an absurd amount of sustain. It, she's like almost at the point of feeling overtuned, in my opinion. Um, her gear, counter set gear, is pretty much just um, pure stats as much as I could get. I just wanted to avoid effect and effective uh, resistance. Um, is there something with effectiveness here or there is this ring? So I could have optimized this. I'd want to swap this in for speed, I think. Can I do that now? Do I even own a speed gem on crit set? Probably a silly question to ask. Oh, I do. Well, okay. Now it's optimized. There we go. Two. Feels bad. That's okay. Um, so if that, if that rolls a three, then this will be 160 and it'll look a lot nicer. Um, but yeah, so basically you're just looking for really high stat pieces, similar to other bruisers. You just don't want to have wasted stats and you want your things to high roll. So that's Ravi, um, complete all-star, A-plus unit. Um, I would draft her at the very end into LR Crow, and she works super well. Um, basically, I never took her when the enemy had Blue Crow or when the enemy had SSB. Um, or at least I would never take her in those scenarios when I was letting those units through. If that was the only threat and I could ban it, then I would still use her. Here's Adventure Ras. He was another unit that I drafted quite a bit um, on the final day. He is very strong. Um, I really like, you know, his setup and his synergy with Falconer Clurry. Um, I think that Adventure Ras also has a lot of value with his uh, skill 2 here that you can soul burn and provide immunity. So I oftentimes picked him when I was using a Protect the Seni comp and the enemy had a Tywin, for example. You can take a Ras and just give your Spectre Tenebria essentially permanent immunity for the entire fight. Um, and also constantly pulling her in. It was a very strong combo. Um, with ARAS, I think you want him fast. You want him around 250 speed, so he's almost there. And then you just want him tanky. Um, so I gave him 24k health and 1650 defense. Um, I had him on a build previously with higher effectiveness, but I don't think that you really need that anymore given the frenzy changes. He has all this ER here, so that's a bunch of wasted stats. I don't remember what item. Oh, this item has ER. Yeah, and it has attack here also. Um, so this, this item you would probably change with a new gem system to flat health. And then this would be a perfect soul, re soul weaver weapon. Um, it's one of my faster speed swords because my speed swords are not super, super OP like some people. Um, so that's why he's using this one. So he has some wasted stats on the sword there. Uh, and then the helm. A lot of his pieces just have really high speed. You know, crit chances, I guess, great if you can get it. But really, I think you need to focus on speed and tankiness for ARAS. He's not one of those, like, bruiser, you know, knights where you're building high crit chance on him for extra damage, like some people do with FCC. I just don't really think it's possible to do, given how fast you have to run him and how tanky you want him, also. Um, so those are his stats. And then Rise of the Monarch, I think, is a really strong artifact on him. But to be honest, you can use pretty much any knight mitigation artifact on him. I like Rise of the Monarch because he's basically my fastest knight, so he's going to be the one that will take greatest advantage of this. You could put him on, you know, Aureus or Adamant Shield, that would be fine too. But this was a really strong artifact to pair with, you know, like the Protect the One comp, like with Stinny, so that he could constantly give her that shield in the event that you didn't have FCC or if they killed her. So that's ARAS, um, really a great unit. Like I said, a nice pick into a Tywin um, and into a Bruiser Draft also when you were going against really tanky teams that were trying to stall you out. ARAS with his defense breaks just adds so much damage um, and it can really just overwhelm their ability to heal through it. Uh, so I never used Fire Cecilia. She's just holding random pieces right now. Um, here's Lilius. I did draft her a couple times on the final day. Um, she didn't, she performed okay. I just kind of threw this gear on her. It wasn't really, it was kind of just like a last ditch effort to make her useful. Um, because I did want to take her occasionally in the event that the enemy took, you know, Bassar or something like that. Um, my previous build for her was around 250 speed and a little bit tankier and then just like zero crit chance or crit damage. And I was using that to counter Falconer Clurry. And I just found that I never ended up taking her. It just didn't seem to work very well. It was something I did last season and it was okay. And it, I don't know, it just felt like you were bringing this unit to use S3 and... Um, cleanse away one Falconer Clurry S3, and then she did literally nothing the rest of the game, and then Clurry outcycles her and has her S3 back up again before you could cleanse again. So it just felt like a loss, 
doing doing that strategy. Or alternatively, they would just S3 your Lilius, and then your Lilius would die, and uh, it kind of felt bad. So my reasoning here was slow her down a bit and give her some damage. So if I do bring her into, you know, like Basar or Falcon or Clurry, she's at least adding a little bit of damage to my side. So to that end, I still wanted to keep her fast so that she could outspeed many DPS on the enemy side. She's not going to outspeed Arby at this speed, but she's going to, you know, outspeed, you know, like Landys and stuff like that, and then just have damage. Uh, I think, you know, another build that I saw a lot of people using was the effect resistance build. I think that is a, a strong option for Lilius. Um, she can have a lot of utility if she has effective uh, resistance. You can kind of pick her into like fairy tale tenebrias and stuff like that. The problem with that is that you need a ridiculous amount of ER to get, because she has like almost nothing. She has no base ER. So getting her up to like 250, which is where I would want an ER unit to be, means she's going to be like super squishy or not that fast. So I kind of looked at my gear and I tried building her, and I just couldn't get one that satisfied me. She was around 200 speed, I think with like 220 ER and had like at least enough tank to not, you know, just like fall over to a breeze. Um, and that just felt not good because 220 ER, I didn't feel like was enough to really do that job. Um, in terms of her artifacts, I just put Steadfast Gatekeeper on her because I was planning on taking her to Basar and stuff so that she could get that CR push. You could use Adam and Shield here. You could use a lot of things. The Knight artifacts, I think, are really flexible. It can be kind of spread around just depending more on how you like what knights you draft most often and when you want those artifacts, you know, on your side. Here's Charon. Did not pick him on the final day. I think I picked him like once a couple days prior to the end of the season. Uh, just literally as a fifth pick against certain like really squishy aggressive teams where they didn't have a strip so that I could take advantage, you know, the fact that he comes in with immunity, can one-shot one of them and just wipe some of their team. So with Kron, um, it was basically just give him a bunch of damage. Uh, so I just took a bunch of gear that wasn't on other units that had, you know, high crit chance, crit damage, and attack. Um, I didn't focus on speed at all because his base speed is, you know, pretty fast, and put him on speed set and he'll at least turn cycle at a reasonable speed. I also did not have enough gear to put counter set on him because uh, I don't farm Banshee that much. Um, I know people do run counter Kron's. It's okay, it's fine. Um, but I think speed set works just as well. Arguably maybe a little bit better. Um, you know, the counter proc is pretty low. He does do a lot of damage when he counters, but the types of teams that I'm taking Kiron into are teams where I'm just expecting to, like, one-shot them, and then I just kind of want him to get back around to S1 and wipe him out. Um, in general, though, I don't like counter set unless I'm getting a ton of value off of that S1. Okay, here's Politus, the so-called, um, destroyer of Cleave. Uh, which, as we've seen, is not really the case. She's more like the destroyer of A-Lots, um, because he's a unit that just almost never gets picked anymore. I picked her once or twice on the final day. Uh, I think I picked her once into Flurry, um, as kind of a Flurry counter, and she actually works that way, uh, because it forces the enemy to use their Flurry skill 3 on Politus and not on some other high-value target. So you kind of have to fit her into a draft where you have a unit that will be immediately impactful after Flurry goes. For example, Tea Time Tenebria. And even though Flurry outspeeds both of them, if she uses her S3 on the tea time Tenebria, who let's say is like at 250 or 260 or something, and the Flurry is at like 270 or 280, then it triggers Politus's passive and she just goes bananas on everybody. So that was kind of my reasoning there with Politus. So in terms of her build, I wanted to give her speed and uh, you know tankiness, and then I wanted some effectiveness in case I was using her in that situation against a flurry, which means that I'm probably playing a team with bruisers, so there might be an ER unit or something. So this has enough to like have a chance at debuffing like 150, you know, ER soul weavers and stuff. Um, and then obviously, like I think if you ever run into an opponent that uses a lots and C Dom, you take her there because she becomes a must ban in that situation. I think Abyssal Crown is really strong on her uh, because you know her S2 is going to be AoE, and then you follow it up with an S3, which is AoE. So you have a lot of chances to proc Abyssal Crown stuns. Uh, you could also use Book on her. Some people use Cyber Ren, so you have options. Um, so for her gear, it was just kind of health, speed, defense, and effectiveness is what I was looking for. I think she's a really niche unit that you're going to you know oftentimes pick later on in the draft. Uh, but, you know, when you pick her and she works, she works. So, um, overall, I think she is useful and worth building. 
Uh, I don't really use these people in RTA. She just got buffed though, so maybe we'll build her. Luna is a uh, expedition uh, only unit. So here's Blue Crow. Blue Crow is actually a unit that really went up in my pick priority in the week, in the final week of RTA. And the reason I think is basically just the fact that Fire Ravi exists. Um, he is a pretty solid answer to Fire Ravi. Uh, you can use Blue Crow to provoke her and then she hits back into him and half the time she misses so that mitigates a lot of the damage. And even if she does the damage, he has horse. So it's just getting him closer to deleting her basically. Um, the build with him, I think you want him reasonably fast. I think around like 205 to 220 is kind of where you want him. Um, I wanted mine pretty tanky because he's my Aureus holder. And I think that, uh, you know, if you have an Aureus holder, I want him to be tanky and to be able to take a hit so that he doesn't immediately fall over to the share damage. Um, and then I built him with about 100% effect resistance. I didn't want to go much higher than this because if I did, I was going to have to sacrifice HP defense and speed to do that. And my main goal with this effect resistance was to prevent getting provoked by things like um, FCC was the main thing, you know, and other units like General Purgus, for example, that can provoke. Um, and this worked the vast majority of the time. He rarely got provoked by those units. Um, so for him, I was kind of looking for Soul Weaver gear, you know, with health, defense, effectiveness, sorry, effect resistance and speed. Um, that could be optimized with a flat health gem. The new gem system is kind of nice. Like it, it lets you, you know, turn pieces that were a little suboptimal into perfect pieces, which is kind of cool. I like it. Um, this piece I think is like pretty low itemization wise, but I was trying to get his HP as high as possible so that his horse would be impactful. So that was the reasoning there for this ring. It just like rolled a ton into flat HP. So this is a HP stick. Um, I think he does have a couple imprints, which he got before LR Crow came out. Uh, but overall, um, I did draft Crow a fair bit. Um, you know, whenever you needed an Orius holder, he was a pretty good one. Um, I drafted him into Last Rider Crow a fair amount because it enabled his horse pretty quickly. Um, so yeah, overall, I would say he definitely rose up in my pick order um, in the final couple days. Uh, let's see, didn't use Karen or Rose. Um, I did use Cerise. Um, so when I first built Cerise and I started using her, I dumped like all my really good speed gear on her. And I had her around like, it was some, it was like north of 300, I want to say like 307 or something. It was really fast. And um, I was like, yeah, look at my Cerise. Like, she's just going to beat everything. And then I realized it didn't matter. She doesn't need to be that fast to do her job. Um, I also hate drafting Cerise because she's a sandbag unit and she never lands her debuffs whenever I use her. So I just sped her down, or I took her down to 291, which is fast enough that she will outspeed what she needs to outspeed and do her job. Um, I rarely took her into cleave, which is kind of her original purpose, because all the cleavers now use her to cleave. So, you know, they take her like in their first one to three picks, and then you don't really have an opportunity to draft her. Because if you have first pick, like you take a knight or something, and then they take like Cerise something else, and you're like, oh, they're cleaving, and they have Cerise, so I can't take her to counter them. So I rarely drafted her. The times I did draft her, it was to uh, counter uh, General Burgess, essentially to put Restrict on him so that he couldn't, um, you know, do General Purgus things. So to that end, I basically just built her fast and then as much health and defense as I could get with kind of leftover speed gear. Um, I guess it's just my draft style. I do not, I do not like drafting Cerise. Um, I had her on Confile, um, but she never procced it and she just died. So I put her on Guiding Light and that seemed to work okay. I think there was some merit in doing that. Um, she survived a few times because I had her on Guiding Light. Um, so I think it was helpful. Uh, Furious, obviously he's for Wyvern. Um, here's SSB, kind of a degen SSB. I wanted her pretty tanky, and I used the same reasoning with Red Ravi here in terms of her HP and defense. I wanted to focus a bit more on HP because of all the true damage, you know, around, like with Blue Crow, ML Haste, Last Rider Crow, etc. I didn't want to get uh, her nuked from orbit. And then I wanted her to have a decent amount of damage so that she would put pressure on the enemy team. So I wanted, you know, above 3k attack and like 220 crit damage was kind of my goal. Um, and then obviously drink because it adds a ton of damage. Um, I was fine keeping her at base speed. I think base speed uh, can be good for SSB because she sits there forever with immunity. Which can be pretty powerful because, you know, the enemy isn't able to debuff her. Unfortunately, it does mean that when they strip her and stun her with like Cerise or something, 
uh, she sits there and that's done for a while so that can get you but um, overall I'm a big fan of just being really greedy on her stats and ignoring speed I think it works out well um, tried her with some effectiveness before and with the new frenzy changes it just doesn't matter I drafted SSB a ton um, you know people seem to think she kind of fell out of the meta with Rowana and LR Krow and that is kind of true but also oftentimes you have those units so you just take her and she totally wrecks people you know if you take her in like a fifth pick um, so I would use her a lot against people that would take uh, for example FCC and um, Spectre Tenebria you would take her at the end and she's just a must ban in that situation because if they let her through her unbuffable and her defense breaks are just going to completely wreck that team um, so that's how I utilized SSB the other times I would draft her Sometimes if I had General Purgus and they had Fairy Tail Tenebria, you could uh, take Rowana and SSB yourself. So then you would have Rowana, General Purgus, and SSB, and the Fairy Tail Tenebria would, you know, spin in circles, AoEing your whole team, proccing SSB to bat back, proccing Rowana to cleanse off with Stella Harpa, and proccing General Purgus to boost your team up and cycle out of any debuffs. And I did that like three or four times, and it worked so well. I was kind of amazed. Uh, because Stella Harpa doesn't always proc, but I think it was like the combination of Stella Harpa and the combination of g -Perg pushing your team up, it just felt like the debuffs were just never there, and it was pretty awesome. Um, Dizzy, I did not draft at all in the last couple weeks. She's just really hard to use right now. I had her on counter. She was tanky and stuff. Um, it's just it's tough to use her because there's a lot of like really high ER cleanse units that throw up immunity, which can screw her even though she's on violin, and she's... AoE, so units like General Purgus and Last Rider Crow can cause big problems for you if you use Dizzy, so didn't really use her a ton. Here's Fairy Tail Tenebria. I had her on a faster build around like 270, and that's fine. Um, I wanted to make her really tanky though, and kind of use her uh, more as kind of just like a degenerate, like sit there and buff you over and over again unit. Um, I saw a couple other people in Legend were using her that way, and it seemed to work pretty well, so I wanted to try it. I did get to use her a couple times, and she works fine at this speed. Um, and she's really tanky, so she's hard to kill. She has some effectiveness as well, so she's not she's not going to be like a 250 effectiveness f 10 because those are definitely running around right now. You know, but she has enough effectiveness where she's going to debuff pretty much everybody except for like Rays and Destinas and stuff like that. So here we have her gear. It's essentially just speed health, defense, and effectiveness. Kind of similar to Politus, I guess, in terms of like the type of gear you put on her. This neck actually rolled pretty pretty well. This was the one we got from the first Automaton Tower, and it set the standard for me. I was like, oh man, Automaton Tower, I'm gonna get like all this amazing gear, and of course, like nothing has ever come close. And then we get Revenge set this time, which I kind of want to just like throw that thing in the trash and not even open it, but I don't think there's a way to do that. Um, Crown for her, I thought was a good, option um you know with the stuns i think you could run her on book a lot of people were running her on book book is always strong um and then i think some people were also running her on her own artifact for damage uh oh and then i guess in terms of like when i drafted her um i'm not a tea time player i would occasionally take her because i am an fcc player so fcc kind of prevents people from taking fairy tale tenebra easily into you because of the new interaction with you know the way if FCC is faster than your units the shield gets stripped and not immunity thing which has been you know disseminated pretty widely now so people probably know about that and uh, yeah so for that reason people oftentimes didn't take her but when I would take her would be as kind of like a fourth or fifth pick and they had units like Fire Ravi and Aeros together if they had those two F10 was oftentimes a really good match um, just as like a CC unit uh, that was kind of a must ban um, so that's how I used her. Here's Momo. Didn't draft her at all. I've kind of shifted her gear around and she doesn't have great gear anymore. She's pretty slow. Um, I wouldn't draft her like this. Um, I think before I had her pretty similar stats, but she had like 20 more speed. And she was an anti-CC unit. And I liked her a lot, but then General Purgus came out and like the pressure from the enemy team is just so much. Um, it just wipes her out. She can't keep up. Let's see, uh, Angelica obviously don't use. Here's Dain. I did draft Dain a couple times. Um, she's still amazing, she's really good. She is hard to use in Delandia, unfortunately. So I had uh, her built around 229, 230. You could like go Omega Speed on her and build her up to like 250 and try to outspeed Arby's and stuff. 
I don't think that's really the best way to build Dain though, because anti-crit buff is pretty unreliable in terms of, you know, working 100% of the time. Obviously, it works 50% of the time. So if you're taking her into a comp like that, you're basically flipping a coin and you're saying like, if this works, I live. And if it doesn't, I just die, right? If that's like your source of mitigation is anti-crit. Um, I think it's better if you use her in really long drawn out matches where you're not dependent on anti-crit working against these huge, like really powerful high damage abilities. So you're just accruing value over time by constantly like reducing the amount of damage they're doing. And uh, you can really overwhelm the enemy that way. Um, so that's, I think, how to use Diane. That's how I like to use her. Um, so to that end, I wanted her tanky, so you can see that here. And then, you know, having enough effect resistance to not get, you know, provoked and crowd controlled and stuff like that. Rod of Amaryllis, I think, is best in slot for her. You could put her on Celestine if you're going to run her on counter. Hey, look, it's a item that got even better from gems. Uh, this chess piece rolled really well. Um, you're looking for just typical Soul Weaver stats on her, speed, you know, defense. This I want to change to speed if I ever get a speed speed gem. I'm fairly certain they don't exist right now. Um, more speed. So yeah, she has a couple pieces that could be further optimized with the gem, so obviously that's still a work in progress. Elena did not draft Elena at all, didn't really have an opportunity to. I did see a bunch flying around, people were drafting her against like Elercrow and stuff. I think a lot of people on the Korean server were doing that on the final day. Um, I think Elena's a bit of a one-trick pony, and mine's not molded, so didn't use her at all. Um, here's Alencia. I did draft her once or twice. Um, she's kind of fallen down in my priority list quite a bit. Um, part of the reason is because Red Ravius is absolutely everywhere, and Alencia cannot keep up. Um, even if you were to put Alencia on Sigurd Scythe, um, she wouldn't in any way compete with Fire Ravi, I think. Um, yeah, she doesn't have the cleanse. She's just not... Uh, able to get the same value that Fire Ravi is. Um, Fire Ravi has that healing on her S1 anyway, so that plus Sigurd, she just like, heals to full every time. It's so silly. Alencia wouldn't do that. Um, so I built her around 2 of 4. Basically, this is just like a usable build. The times I used Alencia were against ML Luluka because she was able to like break her out of the stealth so that other people could hit her. Um, so that's kind of like I speed tuned her around, you know, to go like before like landy and stuff like that or any other dps around like 200 um like spectra tenebria and stuff to be able to hit uh emma luluka um i think i drafted her with top designer lilibet as well for the defense buff um and maybe that worked well but we'll get to top designer a little bit in a bit i had her on draco plate which i think is really good um but draco plate got moved over to general purgus so now Symbol of Unity is on Alencia, just for the damage and like the hit chance, in case they have a fire unit. Um, I think it works fine. I didn't draft any of these. Um, Charles is on one-shot Banshee gear. Um, so here's Falconer Clurry. Um, she's a big-time MVP for me. Um, I think I have a very good Falconer Clurry. Um, it's not the best Falconer Clurry on Global. That may be Kenny's, because I think his is almost identical to mine with two more speed, which I'm pretty salty about because I really like Clurry, and it would be awesome to say that I had the best one on Global, but I don't. Um, so for Clurry, uh, I think you want her tanky enough not to die, and Speedy is really nice, and then I actually put Effectiveness on her in the last couple days, and I think it worked really well. I had her on a, a different build where I was running her at 285 speed, and she had like 18 and a half thousand HP and like almost no effectiveness. And that was a really good build too, but I needed to use that ring on somebody else, so I swapped her to an effectiveness ring with speed. Um, this obviously needs to get gemmed to like HP percentage probably. And uh, that worked pretty well. Um, the effectiveness was actually really clutch because there were multiple times when I was able to just S3 without soul burning onto like a Ruel or something like that and lock them down with the effectiveness and it, it worked out well. Um, Clurry is a really stupid unit. Um, I think she's super strong. She was made a little bit weaker by Guiding Light, um, you know, the artifact for Rangers that puts them in stealth. Um, so any unit hiding behind stealth is going to be, you know, kind of a counter to Flurry. But I still used her a bunch. A typical draft would be like me taking FCC first. They would do like, I don't know, like General Purgus and Elder Crow or something. And then I would take um, Falconer Clurry and Spectre Tenebria. 
and Clary was really strong in that setup because you could, you know, provoke the LR Crow or the General Purgus and prevent them from AoEing onto your Steny. Um, Steny with Death Break would just delete something. Um, it's a really strong, you know, pair that or trio that can synergize together. Um, there were multiple games where I would use her in the Protect the Steny draft. So, for example, it would be FCC Steny Falconer Clary, and then they would pick other things, and then I would take two things to counter their draft so that Steny was my only DPS. And there were one or two times when they banned the Steny, thinking, I guess, that I wouldn't have damage to kill them. But they also couldn't kill me because Clurry cycles so quickly and heals so much with, you know, her passive healing that she gets, as well as, you know, the continuous healing buff from Justice for All. She can get, like, two of those at once. Um, and then with her defense breaks and provokes, it would just control the enemy team and slowly chip them down, and they would just get completely soloed by Flurry. Um, it happened, I think, multiple times in the last day, uh, which is pretty awesome to watch. So for her gear, it's literally just speed, HP, defense, and effectiveness. Um, you're just trying to get as much as possible. Um, I wish this was like HP percent. That would be pretty sweet. But it's hard to get, you know, obviously it's hard to get speed gear, um, you know, with like good right-sided pieces. You just take whatever you get and you use it. Let's see, these guys are not used. I kind of wanted to use Iceria. Um, I never found an opportunity to. Uh, I just put leftover gear on her, and my thought was like, oh, maybe if they pre ban Flurry, I can draft Iceria with Guiding Light. Like, she's not using Guiding Light here, obviously, but um, I could use her as like a pseudo Flurry, and I could, you know, combo her with somebody like Ruel, or I could combo her with, you know, Landy, or any, any hero that has like a really powerful S3 that you can reset. Um, and, you know, that could be pretty good, but never really had the opportunity to do it. I don't think she'd work as well as Flurry because she doesn't have that same, like, self-sustain mechanism that Flurry does. Um, so never really used her. But I could see her being okay in the right setup against, like, a really stall-centric enemy draft. So here's Landy. Uh, saw a lot of these flying around. I drafted her a bunch also. Um, there's not much to say about Landy. She does Landy things. She's basically an AoE Spectre to Nebria that doesn't always stealth. <laughs> Um, they call it griefing light for a reason. So her gear, I wanted her at 200 speed. I felt like I ran her around 184 earlier in the season, and I tested her out there, and she was a little on the slow side for that. So I sped her up to 200. It helps her turn cycle a lot more quickly with her speed buff, um, and I thought that was really valuable. Um, so it wasn't so much about the starting turn order for her as it was about getting value out of that speed buff and turn cycling fast. And then um, I wanted her tanky, that was my second priority. Um, so I have her at almost 1500 defense and 14k HP. Um, I think that to me was tanky enough. You could go tankier I suppose, but I never really felt like, oh I would have won that match if she was just a little bit thicker and had less damage. It just never happened. So then once I got to this point I just wanted to get as much damage as I could. Um, so that's what you see here. She's kind of similar to Ravi in that you can cheat on her attack because her passive gives her attack. Um, so she actually does a deceptively high amount of damage. This and then uh, the defense penetration when she has full fighting spirit, it hits like a truck. So that's Landy. Uh, here's Basar. Um, I was pre-banning him almost exclusively at the end, so I didn't really use him that much. The rare times I would use him is if I was target banning an opponent. And like, for example, if I knew like, oh, they have like a really strong Arc Demon Mercedes, or if they have, um, you know, like a really strong, like some random unit, like a Katie's or something like that, and you wanted to ban it, um, you could ban Basar, or you could bring in Basar in that case, because I wouldn't have him. Um, when I did that, I would usually pair him with General Purgus for an offensive draft. Um, so I built him fast, 276, uh, which is not, I mean, so this is not like a zoom, zoom, zoom Basar, but this is probably a little faster than most people were running him. And I felt like it was valuable because there were multiple people that were running Bysaria around 260, and if he didn't outspeed by Syria, it felt really bad. Um, if he does outspeed by Syria, it's awesome because she's essentially useless at that point. She gets pushed back and buff blocked, and then when somebody on your team just kills her, and she can't pass her, uh, proc her passive. Um, once I got him to this speed, I just wanted him as fast as possible. I didn't really care about effectiveness. I think some of this gear just has it. So I was just picking speed pieces that had tankiness to them. Um, he has kind of like a, a really lopsided defense and uh, hit points 
and that's because uh, this you know has defense percentage here and then this also has flat defense um, ideally this would just be like HP or something instead but you know speed gear is speed gear and you just whatever the stats are you just kind of use it here's Vivian uh, I think I drafted her once I think I lost with her um, no you know what I think I might have won that fight yeah I think I did win that fight it wasn't because like Vivian got her s3 off and then she died um, she, she didn't get to, t to flush. Um, I had her on a slower build earlier in the season at 230, uh, and she was a lot thicker. She had high defense, like 13 or 1400 or something, and it just wasn't usable because you'd use her and then she'd just still die. <laughs> um, so maybe if you could, if you had better gear and you could get her even thicker, it might work. But I just sped her up um, with the intent of just getting her abilities off. Um, so she has just kind of fast gear. I think you, you draft her in like the fifth spot, fourth or fifth, against a unit like Tywin, um, a Tywin, you know, to prevent uh, his S3 because she gives immunity to everyone. Um, she pairs well with Spectre to Nibri also because of, you know, the attack buff. Um, I have her on the CR push one. Tried her on the cleanse. Eh. It, it just feels like she doesn't get back around to her turn without the CR push one. And then Dingus Orb can help her take a hit. Um... So I think that's probably best in slot for her. So here's Destina, um, a hero I thought I would never mola or use, um, but here we are. Um, so pretty much because of Fairy Tale Tenebria, I have now invested mola into Destina and Ray. So kind of a feels bad, but it is what it is. Um, I basically put all of my ER gear on these two, and they were essentially built to be taken in different situations. Destina is around 194 speed. And she has Water's Origin, so my plan with her was to take her into high debuff teams with f that also brought a ton of damage, so like Arbiter Vildred and stuff like that. And my intent was for Destina's Water's Origin to kind of CR push her up above my DPS unit so that she could cleanse before they took their turn, and it worked pretty well. And then beyond that, I just wanted at least 250 res, and then I wanted... Um, you know, tanky stats. She doesn't have any imprints, so I think she could her ER could actually go up quite a bit from here uh, with those imprints. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much Destina. You just take her into like really high debuff units. Um, you know, units like Fairy Tail Tenebria, Viseria, stuff like that. Um, you know, in order to get the cleanse off, um, and you need to have her on high ER for her um, exclusive equipment. I don't think this one's mandatory. I figured it would probably be the best one just because you're taking her into comps that have really high damage. So if your extra heal ability gets a free refresh, that's really good. Um, you could also give her the cleanse one here, I guess would be fine. Um, I didn't even get to mola her S2. I just kind of ran out of molas. I, I probably would have molded this one a bit if I had the molas. I mean, I'm not going to now because the season's over. Um, but yeah, you're just, you're just looking for effect resistance on her. I think I showed these. Um, so here's Ray. Kind of the same deal with Ray. Um, the difference with Ray is that I sped him up to 215. So I used Ray in a scenario where they're bringing a ton of debuffers, but they don't have a ton of damage. Um, or at least not enough that they could one-shot Ray, who is squishier than Destina is. Um, so for example, when they would bring Tywin, a Tywin, um, that's when I would look to bring Ray because Ray brings uh, immunity and Destina brings heals. So against a Tywin, you really want immunity to break up that cycle of abuse, you know, from him soul burning. And immunity is really powerful for that. And a Tywin was all often paired with LR Crow, so the heals on Ray's abilities were really helpful in kind of like counteracting that LR Crow bike and then putting up immunity to prevent a Tywin from doing a Tywin things. I cheated a bit on his effect resistance here because I'm using Shimadra Staff to give him another 20%. So he's at 255. Uh, he does not have ER in his Awakenings, so that's as high as that's getting, I guess. Similar to Destina, I just focused a bit more on speed with this gear than HP. I mean, I guess he's on immunity also, um, which can you know help in the event that uh, it's another 15% check for them. Uh, with Destina, I was looking for tank stat, so I don't think I could have afforded immunity there. Okay, so here's Rwana. Um, I think Rwana's really good, you know, in the right situation. She's another, like, fourth or fifth pick, and I used her 
fair bit. Obviously, whenever people draft SSB, you try to fit Rowana in at the end to create a must ban for them. Um, I mentioned earlier I picked her with SSB a couple times against Fairy Tail Tenebria, and that worked well when I had General Purgus. Um, I think you need kind of Rowana and General Purgus in that combo to really work. With her, I kind of ignored speed. I just went for pure tank, and I wanted some amount of ER to prevent her from, I don't know, getting debuffed to whatever degree I could. Um, but mostly it was about tank. Um, if she got debuffed, it wasn't the end of the world. Um, having her on counter can be nice because occasionally she will proc a barrier, and then occasionally she will grief you and counter General Purgus and, you know, <laughs> CR push their whole team, which did happen a few times. So I put her on Stella Harpa, which I think is the best in slot for her. It um, really provides a lot of utility in terms of cleansing away, you know, debuffs from like SSB and stuff. All right, so next up we have uh, General Purgus. Uh, so General Purgus is kind of like the terror now that is pretty meta-defining. Um, so many people drafted him, it's ridiculous. He was like a really highly contested first pick. Uh, so G-Purg, um, I speed-tuned him at 221 because I wanted him to go in front of DPS like Landy, who was at 200. Um, you know, and a few, like Alencia, for example, is 204 or whatever. She doesn't really need attack buff, but... Just the general idea is to have him faster than your DPS units. Um, I had him at 229 for a while because I was trying to like get him to go in front of RB and I slowed RB down to 220. I didn't like it. So since I didn't have to worry about RB anymore, I put him down to two, 221 so that he could be a little tankier. Um, in terms of the rest of his stats, I think you want around 20k HP and then 1200 defense and then just try to get as much crit damage as you can. Um, I cheated on crit chance on him. I just had to to get this stat line, you know, like this amount of survivability and crit damage with this speed. I just couldn't fit the crit. I didn't have the gear for it. And I think that it's honestly probably fine to have him around this amount of crit. A lot of times, you know, you're taking him into dark units, so he's going to have 100% crit chance against them. For his EE, I gave him uh, the one that increases combat readiness. I think it's probably best in slot because CR is so awesome when you get it. And then I give him Draco Plate just for the, you know, the crit damage. And, you know, it's nice to have the kind of adamant shield effect on him as well. For his imprint, I left it on dual attack chance because that's really strong. And it, it's ridiculous how many dual attacks you get when you have General Purgus on your team. Um, it's hard to know if they're being triggered from GP or just from, like, the innate dual attack chance. But, geez louise, like, it's just popping off nonstop. So he kind of has, like, Alencia's gear or a lot of her old gear. The, the speedier stuff when I was running her around like 230 speed, like last season, when she was super meta. Um, this ring is kind of bad. But yeah, so for the most part, it's bruiser stuff. HP, defense, crit chance, crit damage, speed. Um, General Purgus was a unit that I drafted a, f a fair amount. I wouldn't call myself like a GP abuser. Like some people were like, that was like their draft because they were picking GP every time. But I picked him a lot. Um, Usually like first or second is when I would take him. And let's see, I would take him a lot if like, for example, they first picked FCC, you know, I'd take like G-Perg and LR Crow. They, you know, they were really good together and you could kind of draft your, you know, craft your team around that opening for that draft. Um, he's just super strong right now. If you've watched any amount of RTA recently, you've seen him do his thing. Um, he's ridiculous. Didn't use Jij Kise, obviously. Here's LQC. I think mine is actually built a little bit differently than a lot of people's. Um, I saw a lot of people were switching LQC over to like a super high attack build with like four to five K attack and then like totally ignoring crit damage and uh, basically building her to do a big splash S3. I think that's, you know, that's fine. Um, I didn't, I tried to like build that and I didn't, I don't think I have the gear to do it really and keep her tanky. Um, when I was experimenting around, I was looking at like, okay, if I want to keep her this level of tankiness, how much attack can I get? And then we can compare that damage output to this. And the damage output was like really similar. Um, if I remember correctly, the S3 splash did more damage. It was like 500 or a thousand more, but then like the actual damage on like the target you were hitting was lower. Um, and then the S1 damage was also lower without the crit damage. Um, so I just decided to keep her this way. Um, I wasn't doing hyper-aggressive, like, cleave type of drafts where I was drafting LQC to just, like, immediately one-shot, like an FCC or something, because um, I have her so tanky. 
Um, I did draft her a few times on the final day, and she, I think, won all those games. Um, I think she's really strong. She ended up being drafted when Spectre Tenebria was banned, um, so it was set up in a way that like we were basically doing bruiser on bruiser fights, and you were picking single target bruisers like Remnant Violet and LQC. Um, and I really liked her tankiness at this level with Sigurd Scythe, um, because she was in a, in a way like Fire Rabby, where she had a ridiculous amount of self-sustain. Um, and I would also pick her in a scenario like, like that one, that you were also going against debuff units like A Taiwan. So you could just sit there and S1 forever, and A Taiwan has zero chance of, you know, surviving the long game because you're out sustaining him and he can never debuff you. Um, so that's how I use Alencia. Here's her gear. It's essentially a little bit of speed and then other bruiser stats. And I just put her on like crit set gear because this stuff rolled pretty well on Sigurd Scythe. Um, so yeah, I'm a fan. She worked pretty well when I picked her. Here's a Tywin, arguably one of the most broken units in the game right now. And um, I picked him a lot. Um, he's super, super strong. He's really good. Um, I have him on a crit damage build. Um, he does a lot of damage. I think, I think this is definitely the best build to have him on right now. I had him on a really tanky build with effectiveness before, but the amount of damage this brings to the table is pretty absurd. Um, I kept him at 250 crit damage. I think some people were running him at like 280 crit damage, but I wanted him to be tanky. Um, I, you know, having him less tanky than this, like I felt like he just died too easily because he gets focused a fair bit. Like people try to focus him down to prevent his engine from, you know, just completely, uh, from just completely destroying them. So yeah, that's why I gave him 1600 defense and 21k attack. And then just the more speed, the better really. Once I got to 100% crit chance and 251 crit damage. Um, so here's his gear. It looks probably similar to, you know, like Alencia's gear or uh, Gperg's gear. Uh, same stats, you know, you're just spreading them out a little bit differently. Could optimize this one to speed for him. That would be good. If I ever get one of those speed gems, it's never going to happen. Um, and then Holy Sack. Um, got it to 30 plus. I think it is uh, really strong on a Taiwan because, again, they people, you know, try to focus him down. Um, Holy Sack won so many games. Just overall, an absurdly strong hero. Um, you know, 10 out of 10 would build again. Here's Fighter Maya. I didn't pick her on the final day, but I mean, I did draft her a fair bit as like an RB counter. She's on the same gear as before. Um, it's basically just like high crit damage, high defense, crit chance, um, and then like some amount of speed. Um, I didn't want to go below 14k HP. Um, even with that, like I felt it was a little low. I think 15 would be better. Um, she felt threatened a bit by Last Rider Crow at that health, um, you know, because he would just chonk away so much of it. But I think she's still good. She's, you know, like a good RB counter. Um, she works. Keeping her on Elbrus, I think, is the right choice uh, if you're going to run her, you know, that slow. Um, here's LR Crow. He's another, like, stupid strong hero right now. Um, I drafted him also quite a bit. Um, so my reasoning with him, I have him on Adamant Shield. Um, I like having the mitigation. I'm more of a passive player, I think, than some players are, rather than being aggressive. Um, oftentimes I'll structure my draft to like take the first hit and then I respond. So I like having mitigation. And for him, um, 26k HP and 17 and a half, you know, uh, 100 defense. Um, he's pretty thick. And 213 speed, I think, is an okay speed for him. I wouldn't want to go much slower than this. Um, I don't think you need to go much faster either because he has speed buff. Uh, but he'll, you know, he'll turn cycle pretty well at this speed. Some people were building him on ER. I think that's also fine. My thought was, if he ever gets provoked by somebody like FCC, he'll probably turn cycle out of it quite faster than she can provoke just because of his speed buff. Um, it was rarely an issue. I think there was one game where he got provoked at a really bad time, and I was like, oh shoot, like this, you know, might cost me the game here. Other than that, though, I didn't mind not having ER on him. Um, so I'm just looking for speed, HP, and then when I could get attack, you know, that's fine. And same thing with crit chance, because it does increase his damage a bit. Um, you know, both of those stats, I think, are not totally wasted on him, but I, they were not my focus. Um, people are running him on Portrait and Symbol of Unity as well. I think they're all good choices. It just depends kind of on your draft. Here is Tempest Surin. Um, I did draft her a couple times um, in the final day, and she worked pretty well. Had to pair her with FCC or she just died, like, instantly. Um, 
Um, I took her into cleavers a few times to good effect, so she's good there. Um, I took her into just kind of like generally squishy teams with a lot of debuffs. Worked really well there too because of her self cleanse. Uh, I wanted her fast. 210 speed I thought was a good amount for her. I had her at 200 for a while and it felt a little on the slow side. 210 or 212 felt pretty good though. Um, here's her gear. It's pretty premium lifesteal gear, I think. Um, like that helm rolled really well. This is a good neck also. The ring could be better because it's a purple. But yeah, essentially just, I think I have like almost no wasted stats on her. Um, no, I, I'm getting health from somewhere. Something still has health, I thought. Maybe not. No, I guess, no, I guess I gemmed it off. Oh, it's from the artifact. That's what's giving it to her. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I didn't want any health on her because I wanted the barriers to be as impactful as possible. Um, overall, a strong hero in kind of like that fourth or fifth slot. Didn't use Celeste. Here's Faithless Lydica. Um, I did pick her a couple times right at the very end, kind of like a surprise I'm cleaving you, you know, type of draft, where I already had Arby. Um, she was like a fifth pick for me against people who I was trying to speed contest, like if they had, if I knew they had like a unit that was around 250, because I had run into them before, I would take her um, to outspeed and then, you know, put up the skull nulls and reset. Um, but not really a priority unit for me. She would, um, you know, occasionally get drafted, and she would do her job when I did. Um, had her on Guiding Light just for survivability. I did not use these guys at all. Not use DJB. Uh, Doris, I might have drafted once, maybe. Occasionally, you know, you can draft her into like a bunch of dark units. Um, but yeah, I, I didn't pick her a lot. I found I took like Ruel and uh, Dain more than I took Doris. Um, similar idea to them though, you know, you just want to make her tanky reasonably fast and have ER. Here's Ruel. Uh, it's kind of funny, like everybody was bagging on Ruel in like the mid-season and then she kind of made a resurgence at the end. Um, I think as people slowed their drafts down or were, like being a little more cautious, you know, they wanted that insurance. Um, Ruel won a few games um, on the final day. Um, you know, she's a classic. She does what she does best. Um, I like pairing her with another Soul Weaver and just making like Omega stall comps. Can be really strong against people that are doing their own kind of like really low damage like knight comps that are trying to take advantage of the fact that knights have really good scaling on everything and they're just going to like be more efficient than you so they don't have any sustain and they're banking on you not having sustain so if you have like squishy dps units the knight will win right because he's just going to like poke the squishy dps down to death before the squishy dps can kill the knight um and uh, you bring like diane and ruel into that and they can't do anything because you have like a massive amount of sustain um, so for her purposes, I built her around 200 speed to turn cycle and then just as tanky as I could get her with 153 res. Um, the defense set, just no particular reason why I used defense set. I just had these pieces and they rolled pretty well. I think I got one from the shop and one from world boss. I refuse to do golem, so please don't think that I do golem. Um, so overall her gear is pretty good. And then I put potion vial on her and I was really happy with it. I think Potion Vial is, is really strong on Ruel. Had her on Water's Origin uh, just to keep her really thick, but I think Potion Vial is better, at least right now. Um, debuffs can be a big problem for Ruel, but Potion Vial does so much work. Like It got rid of so many provokes, so many you know defense breaks. Um, I, I took her into Flurry a fair bit because Flurry will use her S3 and then Ruel's Potion Vial pops off and it just gets rid of like the provoke or the defense break and like you're good to go. So. Um, it worked, it worked really well. I was pleased with it. Did not use these two. Dark Corvus is a dead unit now, thanks to the frenzy changes. All right, so here's designer Lilibet, who I think is absolute trash. Um, I used her like four or five times, and I think I lost almost every single game. It's distinctly possible I don't know how to use this unit. I'm not saying I'm you know a genius and I figured her out and I know her to be garbage. I'm just saying every time I used her, she was awful. Um, and the, the, I guess, reasoning behind that is I would have her on my team, and the rest of my team would be faster than her. So the plan was for the enemy debuffer, like F10 or whoever, to go, put debuffs on your team, and then designer Lilibet's passive would proc and push Lilibet to the front of the team, and then she would use her skill 3 and cleanse your team, right? That like literally never happened. Every single time, F10 would go, 
and there wouldn't be enough buffs on my side to trigger Lilibet, even though after f 10 -E, there was like another person that went, and then then my team would go. So inevitably what would happen is f 10 -E would debuff, one of their units would go and like either put more debuffs or do damage or whatever, and then the first person on my team would go, like FCC or you know whoever it is, and I would get totally screwed because then Lilibet's passive would proc, but part of my team is already gone. So, like, what good is the cleanse at that point? Because some of my team members are at, like, the bottom of the CR bar, and they're just going to get debuffed before they go again. Um, so I was not impressed at all with Lilibet. I know people used her, and I, I did lose to her, like, once or twice. So she can work. It just felt like really RNG in terms of the ability of her to be timed correctly. Um, it was very inconsistent. I, like, I don't know how you control that. I don't know if it can be controlled. Um, I, I feel like I had her speed tuned correctly around 184. Like I was comparing her to other designer Lilibets that were built, and they were all, I think, around the same speed. Like Some people had her at like 190 or whatever, but it was never a matter of her speed, though. It was just like her passive never proc, so I don't know. Um, anyways, so for her build, I think similar to other people, I just gave her like over 2k defense. Some people had better ones, like 2.2k or whatever. Similar crit damage. Um, I didn't put her on immunity. That was like never an issue. I think somebody like stunned her once, but it didn't matter. Um, and then I just gave her Drake or like my spare Draco played for a little bit more damage. So uh, designer little bit, garbage unit. I plus 15 her. Okay, here's Fallen Cecilia. Um, FCC, like obviously like a huge staple in the meta. Um, I built her fast to take advantage of that like tea time interaction that we talked about and then I wanted to make her really tanky So that was kind of my only concern with FCC um, I put her on adamant shield because there were times that I would want to draft her with Crow. They didn't come up very often, but they happened um, With blue Crow, I mean, so he was my Aureus FCC was my adamant um, Almost 28k HP 1700 defense and 230 speed and that's all I cared about so speed HP and defense with her Um, some people put her on, you know, some amount of crit chance, and I think that's totally fine if you want to do that. It just depends on how you're using her. For my purposes, she was pure mitigation and provokes, basically, and you don't really need the effectiveness these days. So, um, yeah, that's FCC. Um, here's RB. Um, I, I did draft RB occasionally, but I'm not a super aggressive drafter, so it was kind of uncommon for me to draft him. When I did, it was like all the way at the end and it was kind of like my opponent opened themselves to get RB'd so they would like take a bunch of squishy things. Like they took like Falcon or Clurry, s 10 -E, um, some other squishy unit, you know, and like something else. So you're just like, okay, you have no mitigation. RB is just gonna kill you. Even if you CC him the first time, if he gabs, like you're just dead. Um, so this is how I built him. I think 240 is kind of like the minimum where you want him 250 is good you know if you can get him to between 240 and 250 i think that's a good speed mark i think any faster than that and you're just going to lose damage you just won't be able to get it you don't have enough rolls um and this is like the minimum amount of damage i would want to run on him um, i put him on immunity so the damage might look a little bit low compared to other rbs out there um but i think immunity was like really important there were like multiple games that i've played when i've taken rb and thank goodness I had immunity in those games because, for example, like they might have Cerise and she would take first turn and if my RB didn't have immunity, he would get stunned and then their Spectenny would come up next and just one shot him, right, with her soul burn and then use her S3 and kill him. And then he would just do absolutely nothing. Um, obviously with this build, you use Basket. Some people are running DGen RBs. I've never been a fan. Here's Assassin Sid. Um, I did draft him a couple times. He might have gotten banned every single time. Um, I, you know, you take him against Cleave as like a fifth pick, and uh, against Emma Lulica sometimes too, because he can usually kill her even with these like kind of low damage stats. Um, I just wanted him really fast at 300 because I wanted him to be able to speed contest, you know, units in like the 280 to 290 range, even if they bring a speed imprint. I just want to be able to take a Sid and say you have to ban this, right? Or he's going to kill someone. Um, he's going to kill a squishy target. So I don't have the best ACID gear. I know there's some like really crazy ones out there that have like this speed with like way more attack and crit damage. Um, but I think honestly, he's fine. He did his job. Um, the few times I took him and he made it into a game, he was able to like kill a C Dom or kill a, you know, T and Lulica or whatever. Um, and I just put him on basket because if that procs, it's like gonna guarantee the fact that he's gonna kill something. 
Here's A. Coley. She's on kind of like leftover speedy like damage gear. Um, I never took her. I have taken her in the past, so it's like I think it's important to have her geared with this gear quality uh, because in the event that you need to take her, she's like amazing, right? If you're in a scenario where they've left themselves open to A. Coley and you can get away with it, she'll just like win the game for you. So it's really nice having her as that option for the rare times probably like literally one out of every like two or three hundred games where you can get away with it um you know then i think she's good so i think 250 speed is like the minimum for that just so she doesn't get outsped by like rb or something or i guess you wouldn't take her into rb but you know what i mean um so that she turn cycles well and she's outspeeding most things is essentially why you want her at that speed and then once you get her there as much attack and crit damage as you can get I think like 3,500 attack and 250 crit damage is a good thing to shoot for. For her exclusive equipment, I think the one that gives her immunity is best. You can also use the one that takes away souls. I think that's also good. I don't think it's as good. Um, I think you want the immunity one. It can make a big difference because if she is debuffed, like she's just donezo. I guess this one's not, this one could be 14%, so she could be optimized there. Um, I gave her Dust Devil. I had her on um, RNL before. And I have a plus 31, but I didn't want to keep it on her when she has this equipment, exclusive equipment, because if RNL procs, it's going to use up her immunity. Um, and that's really awkward. I don't like that. Um, so I think Dust Devil does a comparable amount of damage. You know, she'll just proc her S1 again. It prevents, I guess, like the. <laughs> uh, sorry, it prevents like the OP opener of like you skill 3 into someone and then RNL and then you hit him again. But still, like, Dust Devil will still increase your damage a fair bit. Um, I think you have options for that. Uh, but I didn't like the RNL interaction with her immunity exclusive. Um, here's ML Ren. She's on, like, super leftover speed gear at this point. Um, I tried running her around, like, 305 or something as kind of a meme. Um, and it, it kind of, like, worked a few times. The problem is, I think that she is a aggressive hero. You want to take ML Ren if you are... If you're opening with like speed and then they contest you and then you take Ren to stun their contesters, um, you know, or some like one of their early units or something. Um, but I don't really draft that way. So I never really picked her. Um, I picked her like a month ago, um, a couple times. She's fine. The problem is she's like kind of Chlory on steroids, you know, and that like you have like a lot of opportunities to fail with ML Ren. Um, so, you know, you're going to get griefed when you use her occasionally. It happens. Here's Rylet. Um, I didn't draft him on the final day because Platy told me not to, um, and it worked out. So that was a smart decision. Um, I did get soloed by Rylet though on the last day. One of yeah, the, a game I lost in the last uh, two hours before the season ended was to a Remnant Violet solo. Um, so that was pretty tragic. Um, I think this is a good build for him. I think this is almost as good as it can get because like these are pretty highly rolled pieces. So if you don't like this stat line, you basically have to move the stats around a bit. Oh, that's not true. It, it could be a little, like this ring could be better because this is a flat health ring. So this could be HP percentage here. And then this could be like defense or something. So it could be better. Um, but otherwise, like all the pieces are pretty high. Um, I would like to get him a little more defense. I, I could maybe sacrifice some HP for that. Um, in terms of his damage, I think that this is the minimum I would want, and I think he needs to be on Violet Talisman, unfortunately. Um, it's kind of just the name of the game with him. I've tried him on Dreamblade, and the problem is that he just doesn't do enough damage. Um, even later on into High Frenzy, it just doesn't feel like he kills, but with Violet Talisman he does. So the only time I ever draft Rylet is in a game where like, there's no Bryceria, there's no Blue Crow. Um, and there's probably no LR Crow. If those three are not on my opponent's side, and they're on my side, or they're banned, or whatever, they're not an option for that opponent, then I could consider taking him. Um, and you're really planning on going to the late game, and you're also planning on taking first turn and taking the initiative um, to allow him to have a turn or two to tick up his Violet Talisman. So if you have like a Bassar or something like that on your side, or something to like give you first turn like a Flurry, then I think he is um, a solid pick, um, and he can do he can do work in that scenario. Uh, but that's Rylet. Here is Briar Witch Assyria. Um, drafted her a ton. She got banned a ton. 
she got let through a fair bit also, and she did really well when she was let through. Um, I think Guiding Light is pretty much a must on her. I was running her kind of greedily on Symbol of Unity to deal with Rylets, but honestly, like I, I almost never ran into Rylet on the last day. And while the damage was really nice to have, having Guiding Light is like amazing because it lets you draft her into Falcon or Clurry, and then that presents a big problem for them because you're still going to get your S3 off. And in addition to that, it procs a fair bit after you use it, and she can get off like a few S, you know, ones in addition to that with her passive and the stealth. It makes a big difference. Um, so for her, I think it's just all about speed tuning. I wanted her to go in front of my RB, so that's why I put her at 250. And then as, as much crit chance, crit damage, and attack as I could get with uh, that, you know, stat line. Um, so you can see the gear. It's I think it's like it's pretty well rolled but I don't have like top of the top of the top DPS gear. So I, there are definitely better Bryce areas out there with like, I think a similar speed and like 3,500 attack and like 250 plus crit damage. Um, they're definitely out there. Did not use Opsig at all. I kind of wanted to, she's pretty awesome. Here's our Demon Mercedes. Um, I did draft her a couple times. Um, I like this build. I know other used her a ton. I don't know how he builds her. Um, I think this build's pretty solid. Um, I've tried her with no effectiveness. I've tried her with crit damage, or crit uh, chance, sorry, not crit damage. Um, and I've tried her with kind of a mix of the two. And it didn't feel like crit chance was worth it. Um, like, you have to put a lot of rolls into that to get enough crit chance for it to matter. And it, you just can't do it while keeping her attack, her defense, and her health high. Um, the effectiveness, um, I think I just had a few pieces that rolled well with effectiveness, so I tried it. And I think it actually works pretty well. Um, it's really nice to be able to seal like Rwanda's and stuff if you run into them. She was a rare pick. It was usually against D-Gen Arby's. Like if I knew the opponent had a D-Gen Arby, then Amaro, you know, and assuming they didn't have heroes that countered her, was a good uh, you know answer to D-Gen Arby. Uh, didn't use Oxlots. Not a cleaver, so I didn't use Cedom. But she's on Death Pen set. I think that's pretty cool. But yeah, I don't I don't use her ever. Um, here's Champ Z. I guess I took his sword away. Whoops. Um, also never drafted him. I think some people did in combinations with like Dilibet to counter stuff. Um, I guess I guess that would work. I think I, yeah, I need to put him on this one and just I-90 it. Um, Champ Z, I've just, I don't know, I'm just not a fan. Um, it feels like he doesn't do enough damage. I probably need to take him off Lifesteal set and just put him on Speed set or something. Um, but yeah, he's okay. I, I don't know. Um, I think as like a fifth pick, he can be okay against like super heavy debuff teams that are squishy. Um, people just don't draft those right now, you know, but if they do like f 10 Cerise, like regular Tenebria, um, Basar, stuff like that, if they're drafting all those units, um, then you can go ahead and bring them in. But beyond that, um, I just didn't pick them. Here's spec Tenny. I think easily my most drafted DPS hero. Um, I took her whenever I could. She's a huge MVP. Um, she just did a tremendous amount of work. I couldn't imagine pushing without her. Um, she's great. Uh, I wanted her as tanky as possible, and it's really hard to get her high HP uh, because her base health is really garbage. Um, I had her on a different build where she had like more defense and like nine or 10K HP. You can't do that anymore because of Last Rider Crow. Um, he'll just delete her. So I feel like this was like just tanky enough. I think I probably would want her at, like at 12 if I could. I just don't think I could do that while getting her the same stats. I think I would have to switch her to a crit to a crit chance neck because that gives you more stats if you do that. Um, I just don't have a crit chance neck that works with her. Um, so here's her gear. But yeah, you basically just want her as tanky as possible, close to 200 speed, like 190 to 200 is good. And then... Um, I think you want to focus on attack over crit damage. Having some crit damage is nice, like 250 is nice, and then I think the rest should go into attack because her passive here scales with attack. She's also triple S, which helps a lot. Uh, here's Emma Lulica. I did draft her a fair bit. She works pretty well. Um, I don't have the best Emma Lulu, but I think she's pretty good. Um, the uh, reroll gems that we've gotten, modification gems, I think have helped a lot with her. Um, like here, I'm getting more crit chance. Um, let's see, not that one. This one, I'm getting like more flat attack. 
Yeah, so I'm getting I'm getting a fair bit of stats from those, which help a lot and kind of bump her up. And it let me use pieces that I wouldn't have been able to use otherwise. Um, so that's really improved her. I think she had like 3,700 attack before, so it made a big difference. Um, she's on a crit chance neck, um, so her crit chance is a little low. But I think that's fine, because her attack is pretty good. And Dingus Orb gives her a bigger barrier based on her attack, so I think that synergizes well. Um, took her a bunch into Arby's and stuff and just deleted them, so that was pretty awesome. Here's ML Haste. I think this might be the last one. Um, he does his job. There's not much to say with ML Haste. Idol's Cheer, MVP for him. Um, took him a lot. It, it was hard to draft him into all of the you know buff blocks running around, like Viseria, Basar, and Tea Time. But you had to play with those in mind and take him, and when you did, you know, he was a must-ban because they take RB into ML Haste and they don't have a way of dealing with it, then they just lose. Uh, with him, I wanted him tanky as possible. I wanted him to have really high defense because when I would take him against Cleavers, they would try to C-Dom him. Um, so having really high effective HP, I think, with him was really important. Um, and he usually survived the C-Dom. But yeah, so that's ML Haste. Um, not much to say with him, just high HP, defense, and speed. Um, I think, that, so that's that's it. Um, those are the heroes. Let me know if you have any questions. I'd be curious how your climb went. Um, otherwise, that's it. Thanks for watching.